What is going on guys? I am so stinking excited to be here today. I'm going to be talking with Kate Pinter and she's actually going to be hopping on here in a moment and we're going to be talking about productivity. We're going to be talking about connection. We're going to be talking about balance. We're going to be talking about integrating all that knowledge that you have and really being able to actually for the first time, actually use it and actually, what's up Enzo, what's up Mikey? So guys, go ahead and comment below um, if you can hear me because I wanna make sure that you guys can hear me. Started here in just a moment. It looks like Miss Kate is uh, getting added right now, which is super exciting. I can't wait, so we're adding her in right now and we'll get rocking and rolling. Talking about, what up? Yes. We made yeah. it. We made it. What's up? We made Do you it. Want to go ahead and share it live on yours and then we'll get jamming. Okay, let me hit share. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> so exciting. That's super duper exciting. I can't wait. Here, okay. actually, let's, um, let's take a walk for a moment. I'm going to. Hey, I'm gonna Daniel. Go, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share with everybody. Um, okay the application which we'll be talking about in a moment awesome <laughs> so if you want to get started i am super present cool. I'm, I'm glad three times is the charm which three is times? fantastic <laughs> yeah this is our, our third effort today to come together but but i've been so looking forward to this for so many days so i'm i'm really excited um to, to have you today to interview i want to pick your brain can i do that of course you can. I, I got a lot of cool people following um, today that are going to actually want to engage in the conversation. And, you know, a lot of us are tired and sometimes feel burnt out. Are we going to talk about that? That sounds fantastic. I really, yeah. That's kind of my favorite thing to am on, so. Is it really? Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Spring says, woohoo, yes. Um, and hey, guys, go ahead and um, hit some love on this if you're here so that it, it pops up then we can see who's here it helps create like a, a whole circle space of just like you know otherwise we're just talking out in the universe and we're not sure if anyone's picking it up so go ahead and, and comment tell us where you're from um hit the love button if you want hit the like button and um yay sandy awesome so glad you're here what up sandy awesome and spring love it love it yeah exciting cool. So excited. Thank you so much, Kate. This is so fun. Like even just, I just love getting on any kind of technologies with you and just jamming. So yeah, thanks. so fun. So is fun. It... So can I just start asking you questions? Please. Does that work for you? Like, when, when people ask you what you do, because I get asked this a lot, mm. what is it you tell them that you do? Just like. Definitely. Yeah, I help moderately successful and and like emphasis on moderately successful people, um, entrepreneurs, high achievers who um, are really wanting to master boundaries and master right. confidence so that they can truly have the time and the freedom that they're really looking for in their lives. And so a lot of times it looks like entrepreneurs um, where their life has just gotten kind of mushy and it's, <laughs> it's right. like really hard right. to like, what's my personal life and what's my business life and what's my relationship life look like and so nice. really get laser focused in on what that looks like and then increase in turn increasing productivity and fulfillment so and result okay. which i think we all want more of right like don't we all want more results yeah. right? <laughs> so, i hope so i hope yeah. so results yeah. driven um that's a, i mean i think actually that's a really cool distinction is that i think when you know, you see coaches out there, they're not necessarily all results oriented. And so, mm. I mean, there's, there's a huge, yay, thanks for those loves, uh, Danielle and Spring. So not all coaches are. Sometimes coaches are just about, like, you know, improving your experience, and it's not necessarily tied to what you're doing as a business owner. So I like that that, and that's, I think that's something that really resonates in your work with me, is that mm -hmm. um, it does actually help me perform better which my strengths that I have a lot of strengths friends on here. My strengths need that. 
<laughs> it mm -hmm. has to be tied to some kind of outcome that's measurable for it to be in that investment space for me. Definitely. Yeah. And I think that that's really it is that the more that we're able to focus and, and be more productive in the way that we use our, like actually utilize our days, our weeks, our mindset is ultimately leads to the bottom line. Yeah. It's like, are we making the phone call? Are we right. doing the thing um, that's going to create the results in our businesses? Absolutely. Yeah. For sure. For sure. So I want to share a little bit. Um, I'm going to ask you to describe your Supreme Performance Academy, but I want to just share a little bit about our session that we did, if that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Okay. I, got, I got my people on I'm here. <laughs> so, so not what I expected it to be. Like that was not, I mean, I, when we went into it, I was thinking I'm going to move my body a little bit, maybe, but it wasn't, it was, I had no idea like how productive I would be on the other side of this, of actually integrating, you know, some like somatically in my body and some yoga yeah. in between that, like that was, that was really surprising. Mm, so did you come you. up with that on your own or tell me about, tell me yeah. about this one of your yeah. process. I'm sure this ties into the academy. Most definitely. So within the academy, I have a movement process that I've been working on for the past eight years. Um, so it is okay. completely mine, and it's a process that I've done um, integrating neuroscience and what I know in neuroscience, and I, I have a strong background in that as well. I just love neuroscience, and you and I have talked about this, like just geeking <laughs> out on stats and research things, um, but it, coupling that with movement. And, and what's been so fascinating to see is that um, the conscious mind and the unconscious mind and how they play together. And, you know, I think for so many of us, we've spent so many years up here in our conscious mind, which is awesome. It's great. But we're leaving 90% of us so from true. the... So true. Um, we're leaving so much of that um, on the table, unfortunately. And Deanna says, now you're talking her language. You said neuron. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's awesome and sandy's taking a neuroscience course too that's awesome I yeah understand. love that yeah i love that deanna yeah so so that really is truly what it comes down to for me it's like i feel like so much of the work that we're doing today is devoid of our bodies and so i've yeah. created a system where it's actually it's not just going to the gym it's not like just like pumping weights or whatever because that's right. great but I think what we right. do is we sort of we've um cut those two pieces of our lives and separated them as like work is over here and that's a mind thing and uh, play and movement and exercise and all these things, these are over here. And what right. I've done is created a really simple system. It's like very incredibly simple, but just as we said, incorporating neuroscience to the place where we're able to bring the two of them together and actually have a conversation between our unconscious and our conscious mind. Yeah. Anything that isn't our conscious, our, I love it. Our, our head is is our unconscious, right? So everything that isn't conscious is unconscious. Right. Seems simple enough, but really that's what it comes down to when we're talking about our body is an unconscious mm. representation of our consciousness. And so the more that I can bring these things up to the surface, like how freaking right. cool that I can get these incredible insights that come as I do these like really simple movements. So. I love it. It's so good. And I like even just metaphysically like this week. So just like seeing like uh, the moment I decided to start paying attention to my body with even the productivity, I got this infection because you know what I had scheduled this week, what? a video shoot for my video course, new branding photo shoot on Wednesday. We had this live. And then what happens <laughs> if there could be any resistance or any unconscious in the body? I'm like, Oh, okay okay, this is awesome. So it was hilarious. It, but, and also just a chance for me to say body is safe while we're going through this. So showing up, you know, amidst that with that self-compassion and just noticing when that old neurology wants to, you know, to creep in. Absolutely. And the way I used to resist, like when I lived in, you know, with severe nerve pain for so many years, I tried to deal with everything from here up and I disassociated with everything below and now in that integrated space, it's a lot safer for my body to pro process that stuff out. And occasionally stuff still happens. Um, but it's but it's so, it, this mind, 
body connection, like really it's, it's moving that physical body with that and, and having that conversation is, you know, it's making a huge difference um, for me because I, you know, I had to learn to disassociate. That was survival, but that's not a, a great, like a lasting, you know, it's not a lasting skill. <laughs> right. Yeah. You stay and that's connected from the body and you just try to produce, 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 you get burnout. out. Yeah. That's what happens. We don't pick up the signals. Yeah. So. And then when everybody comes to me usually is, and I, some people kind of, and some of my clients will joke, like, you're kind of like the person in my little black book that I call when I really need to like, <laughs> whatever that thing is, because that's just it is that for so many of us, we end up burning out because we've used and like you said, it's like there our mental capacity, our conscious mind can can like can do a lot like we can do a lot with our conscious oh, yeah. mind. Um, I mean, we can start businesses, we can start relationships, we can start yeah. a lot we can make momentum happen really quickly. Now the sustainability piece, that's right. the other and that's that's where I really like to come in is is really how do we integrate all these things that are happening in our minds and and the forward momentum we're taking in our business or our relationships mm -hmm. or and integrate that into our bodies so that you know and people talk about alignment a lot but they're just it's right. just like it's not necessarily anything that really means anything it's just like it feels good or something but alignment right. really to me means like my head is aligned mm -hmm. with my body, like my heart, my nervous system, right? To take it on a neuroscience level is, is aligned to my nervous system, is aligned to my hands, like the action I'm taking. So yeah. that all yes. three are working in the same direction at the same time, in the same sequence, rather than fighting mm -hmm. against them. And so much, you know, of the time, I think a lot of my clients and, and what you had even mentioned, Kate, is like just really yeah. like fight against your body. Um, right. rather rather than with it. And, you know, when people talk about like miracles and all these different things happening, sure. so much of that actually becomes just a byproduct because they're like actually just going with the flow of the things, you know, of yeah. the way in their body and their hands are all moving in the same direction rather than kind of like intertangling moving in different directions. Right. Right. That makes a lot of sense um, up here. But even just knowing like, if you can picture like striving energy, which is um, striving energy is there's like a conversation underneath that, that, you know, we have to work hard or it has to hurt to be successful. <laughs> like that was an old mindset I had. Cause I could, I can, I can work so hard. Um, I actually think I got a high off of that pain journey of like, I love to know how much I'm getting done and I want it. I have a high achiever in my strength set. So I want to look around how hard is everyone working? I want to produce more than that. But coming from that entry for me, you know, did, you know, I, I could lose track of myself in that process. Yeah. So I've had to be really mindful in the last four years of building my business to, to keep that dialogue open, because that is an old default for me, because I actually love the high. I love the high of that pain, work it hard, long hours. I was raised like that. And right. so what is it you do to, um, to support people that are kind of in that new conversation? Because like Danielle's saying here, these are new concepts for her. Um, so tell us about how you work with that. How do you take someone like me from that old space? That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, and I'll, I'll first start out. Last night, we just did the first module of the Supreme Performance Academy, and it was actually just that. Uh, it was asking that question. It's called Body and Energy Mastery. It was the first module. Nice. And one of the questions that we asked in it was, was simply, what is the DNA that you're currently holding on to right. about how work must be completed. Like, how, like what is it right, about? How it is. Yeah. yeah is it hard work? Um, so like, really, what's the thing that's stopping work from being easy? And it's really mm -hmm. interesting because I bet you a lot of people are like, that's ridiculous. Work can't my be. my DNA, yeah. Work has to be really hard. Like, because that's right. a lot of us were absolutely raised. And so, um, yeah, I think, I think what makes my work different and i'll use actually i'll use jamin as an example um a gentleman who just went through the course you know jamin super well kate and he's a really oh, I love great, him. great yeah. guy yeah and he went through the process and for him it was interesting because jamin you know a lot of courses teach knowledge knowledge you know like it's all about like the brain things and so you know um people will do nlp courses people yeah. will 
do um, therapy. They'll do energy sessions. They'll do readings, hypnotherapy. They'll do all these different things. I've those done all of those things. <laughs> yeah. And those I've spent a lot of money on those things. <laughs> Yeah, and that was one of the things that, those are all things that Jamin had done as well. Sure. And what's so fascinating was that for him, what he found what was missing was the integration piece. Was like, it's so great, I know all these things, but it doesn't actually get me results because I'm not actually sustainably taking action on these things. Because like, we all like, we all get planners, we all get yeah. accountability buddies. We like, we, we do all yeah. these things to like, try and strong arm ourselves and, and like I do this too like strong arm ourselves mm -hmm. into like actually getting results whatever it and, takes and it does work right like like it would be silly of me to say like planners don't work because they do sure. work um right and so do accountability buddies they work now the question is how am I using that accountability buddy or that planner is it to force myself to do things that I don't want to be doing or to That's force true. myself to be doing things at a time that doesn't work for me or basically yeah. that's when the breakdown starts to happen between our bodies and our minds and mm -hmm. that is the process that i like to get super ninja at with clients is like getting really clear on like not to say you're ever going to skirt any of your responsibilities or get out of commitments or anything like that but where can we renegotiate some of these agreements that we've made in our lives and where can we really integrate these yeah. all knowledge that I have on this level and really bring it down into my body so that it's like we talked about alignment and, and right. we're creating everything from that place rather than from this like kind of fighting and working uphill kind of place. Right. Right. That's it's so curious. The, I love, I love the word ninja. Cause I'm, I'm picturing like that movie inception. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm going to lose my, my video there. Um, so yeah, just like there's this whole process of that you have that you take people through in that. So can you talk a little bit more about that? Like, what is the ninja moving? Like, what is, what does that look like? Yeah, yeah. So, so there are three steps to behavior change. Okay. And um, a lot of us, you know, I love Tony Robbins. I think he's fantastic. Like I love, and I've read all, like almost all of his books. I can't say all of them because there's like a hundred of them or whatever. Right. <laughs> I've read a lot of his work. He's fantastic. He has some of the greatest things. I think the telephone game happens and people read his stuff and it goes down the line and it gets like really mm -hmm. mis mistaken for what it really is meant to be. And the first step though, to all behavior change is awareness right like yeah, like you sure. watch right now you human you're getting awarenesses right like there's yeah. things that kate's saying there's things i'm saying that are giving you awareness which is knowledge and that's awesome but what ends up happening is a lot of people move from that to massive action and they go straight right. into like, okay, I got this. <laughs> i'm gonna go so right like that's what we talked about earlier is they go from here to here they go right from yeah. the head to the hands and they take massive action which right. is awesome. They get a planner. They like work on their marketing funnel. They work, they like, they do all of these things and they, and they dive into like massive action, which then they, it's almost like a sprinter. They sprint right. and they go and they do the thing and then they have to like recover for like a week. And they right. just typically, the sustainability factor and the consistency factor. Yeah, sustainability is so key, yes. Yeah. yeah. And so what I like to teach is the second piece to behavior change. So there's awareness. It's actually triple A. And I learned this from, from one of my mentors a long time ago. Amanda talks about this. My beautiful wife talks about this a lot too, is the first one is a awareness. The second one sure. is acceptance. And then the third acceptance one. Acceptance of what? <laughs> acceptance of what? Exactly. What Except do I have to accept? Yeah. Acceptance right? of where we've been. Where we've like, been. Mm. Of, of, and it's really, it's even can kind of come down to like a mourning process. And mm. that may be extreme, but that's part yeah. of the movement work actually facilitates. Is it except it's, it's instead of, and this is so, this is me getting on my soapbox here. In the 21st century, 2018, 
we are all about adding things. We are all about the excitement yeah. of like, there's this new thing. I need to buy this boat and I need to get cable television with 150,000 channels on it. And it's like, <laughs> we just are all about adding things. And when something isn't working, we add another thing, hoping that that will actually fix that thing that's yeah. already been there. Yeah, that's yeah so perfect. true. Right? And so acceptance is actually taking awareness of like, Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. I have that awareness. Wow. That is new information. And probably me sharing this, the irony, the inception of all this, the irony is that probably even me sharing this is creating awareness for you. It's like, oh, wow. Oh my gosh. I never thought about that. The second step is, right. wow, I've been doing it all wrong. Like, you know, or, or whatever the thing is, you know, like, wow, right. I've really like missed out on a lot. This has really cost me like a lot. And this isn't about like, <laughs> mental spiraling this isn't right. about getting into your things and for a week and a half like being on the couch sad you know and depressed this is about taking an emotion is right. an emotion right a lot of times we make emotions really woo woo and fluffy but it's just energy and motion in our bodies if we don't do the mental thing about it, it takes 90 seconds for an emotion to fully be felt and pass through and so yeah if we allow ourselves the space to say, wow, yeah, I just, it's what I've been doing isn't working anymore. That actually creates a vacuum in our nervous systems, not like a literal one, but on a metaphorical level, it creates this sure. vacuum of for us to, to actually now get inspired into moving in the direction with the action of something new. Right. Yeah. So I love it. Um, yeah. So one of the metaphors that Amanda gives a lot, and she talks about this in, 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 in this, in the course in module four, it's called relational intelligence. And Amanda, my beautiful wife joins me for that. And one of the things she talks about, it's so funny, is it's uh, she calls it a shit cupcake. It's, <laughs> it's like, it's all great to like, it's great to eat a cupcake, right? Like you got the frosting on right. top and everything. But when you still bite, when you bite into it, it's still a shit cupcake. Like it's still, yeah. at the end of the day, still doesn't taste good. And there's like residue right. from old that we haven't yeah. done. And so again, I don't think everybody, I don't think you need like hundreds of years of psychotherapy necessarily, but in a particular issue as it comes up to be able to look at it and say like, man, whew, I've been not really doing this the way that I'd like to. You know, and to then be able to then right. move into inspired action after, and again, it takes like ninety seconds or so. But that right. is that's the real long-winded answer as to why I do this work with movement and neuroscience and really helping people uh, find that productivity and that fulfillment. You know what I, I I love that you mentioned that this acceptance that happens after awareness. So I had a, one of my clients message me the other day, and they're like, "Is it typical?" after the coaching session to feel like I want to sleep for a week. <laughs> it's like, you know, or to have some kind of physical response. So even in that acceptance space, our body is giving us signs. It's, it's giving a message um, because there is like this, it's this awareness that's happening and something. Um, sometimes we can even look and name what else is happening to us physically so that we can be more present. Um, with whatever we're experiences in that moment. There's something something that happens after that awareness comes or this new knowledge comes and I'm excited because it's a breakthrough. And then yes. that vacuum that you're talking about, something happens in there. Can you talk a little bit about that? What do you notice about that with your clients and, that, and in how you work? Yeah, that's a great, great question. And, so I just want to so, say I'm loving, Danielle, thank you for the comments on here just quickly. Um, I'm so glad this is speaking to you. And for those of you that it is, um, you know, connect with each other on here because um, it's, I think this is super important. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So what, yeah, what ends up happening is, is it basically one of the things that a lot of um, massage therapists and chiropractors and um, energy workers and Ralphers and yeah. lots of people will say that your issues are in your tissues, your issues yeah. are in your tissues muscle tissue. And so there's an energy, there's a, there's a tone that our muscles hold on to and, and they form in specific ways based on 
traumas that happen in our body. And again, I, it I don't, doesn't have to be like dramatic in yeah. that sense of got in a car accident, but we have little traumas even throughout the day that happen to our bodies and in nature, sure. funny enough, animals actually when they are in a in a let's say a gazelle is being chased by a lion when they get out of that situation they actually shake their bodies off they just completely shake and they and they'll shake for sometimes up to like 10 yeah. minutes and it's just simply to take the trauma out of their tissues and what mm -hmm. ends up happening for a lot of us humans we just hold on to the crap like we hold on to this stuff for so long right. and so what ends up happening is yeah, as we go through this acceptance piece, we're actually allowing that stuff to move through. And again, this isn't nice. some woo-woo thing. This actually, like, there's a lot of science to back this, that as we go through the acceptance process and even the grieving process, that as that happens, it opens up space within us to have right. the new thing that we want to actually land. And because we've had that awareness, we know what to fill that space with, which is like, yeah. all right, I'm going to go take action in this direction, right? Rather than right. the one I, so do you, super Do you valuable. find that some people are more sensitive than others to, to picking up little traumas during the day? What's your, what do you think about That's that? Question. Um, Cause like in my strengths paradigm, you know, as a yeah. strengths coach, we do see some people have a, a bigger radar. Um, so they might be more in tuned um, to yeah. the stuff that's happening around them. But I think your program really addresses that in a healthy way, if I remember right. Yeah. Yes, now I know what you're talking about. Absolutely, yeah. So lots of times children that grow up in families where there are, and again, it doesn't have to be super dramatic, but just if they have any that's uncertainty right. or kind of instability as children, it could be that you have a dysfunctional family. Um, but just where there was a level of, and we'll just say me, like there was a level of yeah. Matthew was able to feel fully safe being inside of himself and knowing Matthew's needs, Matthew's wants, Matthew's desires, all these things. And so right. Matthew had super, and Sandy just said it, empathy, empathic. Yeah, a lot of people that are empathic mm -hmm. is having to be hyper vigilant looking outside of themselves and externally aware of their circumstances and their environment. Now, again, it doesn't sound some big like, oh my gosh, this is a big, it's just what happens. Like that happens. And I actually, there's, yeah. I would say probably 80% of the population is this way. Like a lot of us grew up with families where there was a lot going on and like, we just need to be pretty aware of everyone else. And so what this process does is actually turns it back in on you for you to start actually seeing like, wow, I've missed so many things. And I like really haven't let my <laughs> feeling thoughts really matter for so yeah. long. And so this process, again, it takes you from being much more external and looking out around you, asking other people, like lots of my clients have been, again, the hypnotherapy, the NLP, they looked for all these right. other things to fix them. Right. And I think what really makes my work unique is that a lot of people just haven't found a mentor or somebody who's actually going to give it back to them. Like, yeah. that's my is like at the end of the day, I like it for people to borrow my belief in them while they're building their own. And I yeah. want to get to the point that at the end of our six weeks together, the course is six modules long or, or our one-on-one -on -one work together. But that by the time of our, that we're done working together, that you feel like you can completely stand on your own. Like ultimately, you know, Jamin, yeah. the guy we were just talking about, he's like, I probably yeah. never need to hire another again. Like I don't need somebody else because now I can take care of this stuff on my own. I don't need somebody to tell yeah. me like how to take care of my how to like fully um, honor and create boundaries, and have the confidence that I've been wanting. Like I can do that on my own now. Um, I'll give another really great example. Actually, one of my clients, uh, I won't say his name, but he, uh, he basically was working 90 hour work weeks for a company that was building marketing funds. One of the biggest marketing companies on, on the West Coast. He was working 90 hour work weeks, implementing things for them. Since going through the course, he's now okay, working. Part of, get part this of me is so excited about a 90-hour work week. 
really? Part of me hears yeah. 90 hours and part of me is like, yeah. And then the other part's like, oh no, that's a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's, it's, I think that's the other thing is like societally it's yeah. become a bad honor to, to like really um, yeah. work on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think that that's, that's where the rubber meets the road. I think, right. Is like, I think that's why I usually catch people around burnout like around they're getting close to it because yeah. they're seeing they're physically seeing, oh crap i've had this mindset for so long my body is like actually telling me no like no more i'm done yeah. <laughs> um and otherwise they would keep doing it right? that's that's where we have to like in the course of our time together shift that mindset towards um one of right. of, of self-care and and a place of actually like really wanting that at the end of the time together not not like oh i guess i have to do my self-care mm -hmm. stuff uh, and so uh what right. but, but what happened with him though was he's now working 10 hour work weeks kate and that's so cool and 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 it, because he was doing a lot of implementation for this company okay now he's doing consulting for this company he's consulting mm. this same company and and what's cool is he's now making double what he was making before <laughs> working 10 hours a week Indeed. because he had those tough conversations that he had to have with them one of the best guys right. on the team was taking so right. much responsibility for everyone else and taking responsibility for other people's projects and like other things that ultimately a lot of us as um you know high achieving entrepreneurs that want to do the best in the world at what we do a lot of us will take responsibility for other people right and i think that this is the biggest work that we can do is again instead of being external is like how do i turn that back in on myself and really see where i haven't right. been fully trusting myself haven't been fully accepting myself and haven't been willing to courageously share myself and so that's a lot of the yeah. process over those weeks I love it. i'm curious how um so in this space i've experienced it personally and in some of my own practice um, but when that mind yeah. and body are talking to each other and there is that alignment what happens what do you notice with the productivity because in my mind i'm like i used to just use a phrase of like it has to be a hell yes if it's going to be a yes i'm only doing the hell yes, yes. and that to me means everything is yeah. lining up like everything is a yes and years ago when i was working with my coach um i i couldn't find those yeses it, i i thought everything was a yes because i wasn't yeah. picking up there yeah. was like that observation and that awareness wasn't there um and so what do you experience that translating or just talk a little bit about that that's so good absolutely so what i would say is probably the biggest thing in terms of product they stop questioning things. They stop thinking mm -hmm. like, do I, can I really do this? Am I enough? Am I all these things? Because what it now is, is it's a gut decision. It's not a mental like, oh, it yeah. would be maybe, can I do that? Maybe I should read more, one more article on it or something like that. It's like, it's like, no, yeah. I know that I know that I know. Like, you know, I've worked with people mm -hmm. where, yeah, even after one session, they're like, they're, yeah, like they're beside themselves. And like sometimes sometimes tears and emotions come up and things like that. And, and that can be just in one second. And, and they're, yeah, they're like, this needs to change. And it's, it's just that, it's the inspired action piece. Right. So people in terms of productivity is they just go take action on it, like immediately. Um, however that looks in their particular situation. Now, one of the things that I do teach in the academy is is that we have what's called a inspiration horizon. So it's really fascinating. Mm -hmm. We actually have 48 hours to take action on inspiration. So when something comes to us, it clicks, and we're like, oh my gosh, if we don't think about this, if we got inspired on a Sunday afternoon and didn't do anything by Wednesday, what's your inspiration is that? It's like, I, I mean, it nice maybe i'll get around to but you don't usually follow through on it or if you do it's like you have to really like work uphill again to start to do it <laughs> we have 48 hours to like really nail it 
um, as soon as we hit that inspiration. So that's another thing that I have my clients do is like, I just take that dream or that idea and put it in the calendar. Like, let's make it yeah. a project. Let's not make it like some pretty pie in the sky idea. Like, let's put it in the calendar and do it. Um, so that's, that to would commit, be. Oh, commit to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really just to commit to it. And, and to do it like in the next couple of days while that internal motor right. and motivation is there so that it's not something that's like, oh, I just have to do this. Right. But it's, it's right. there. You're ready to go. You just need to take the action. That's so awesome. So people are seeing result really quickly once they start some of these practices. Oh my gosh. It happens later. So. Well, I'll give an example. I had, this is actually one of my very first workshops. So this was actually like, this is so endearing. It's so sweet. Her name was Sarah. And Sarah had been working on a series of children's books. Um, and she had oh, finished the first one. And she was working on like two, three, four, and five. I don't know why, but she was doing all of them at the same time. She did uh, a workshop that I held just teaching my methodology that I teach in the course now. Um, and within a week, she had finished all five of those books, which mm -hmm. I was like, blown away i was like i could not what? even tell people yeah like if you hadn't told me that happened i never would have guessed that that's even yeah. possible. um but it's something that she had been working on for like two years she'd been wow that's huge um yeah and was like boom done like she got them off to the printers and now they're being published in i don't know how many languages and stuff but she's like she was so happy to just move through those things super quickly and and so much of it became because she noticed that there were reasons that she was stopping yeah. herself from creating them. And that was in right. that, you figure that out. Wow, I love it. I love it. So um, if you guys have any questions for Matthew, go ahead and type in the comments and we'll, we'll take some of those um, as well. I would love to hear what people are thinking and what, what you want to hear while we have him. Um, I'm still loving this, that visual of the awareness and acceptance yeah. as the key towards moving into that productive space um can you what are the types of practices that work for you in your own like in your own and can you name your strengths because a lot of my my folks on here are familiar with strengths language i know yeah. you have i'm trying to think <laughs> i remember the, you had focus like, oh oh individualization yes. um that's another thing so so below i actually went ahead and i posted a um a form like it's kind of like a get to know me form and what i want to okay, do cool. is put you're getting paper. lots of love on here get to name those strengths <laughs> yeah so so one of mine though is individualization and so to mm -hmm. that point and actually that might be like my second or third one my first one is actually futuristic or future you're gonna know better is it future or futuristic love it futuristic uh-huh yeah okay Cool. And so, um, and so what I'm doing is I want to offer you guys, because I am so individualistic, even in the course that I run, it's I'm very clear with each person that they have different needs and they're going to have different ways that things need to happen um, and in different sequences. So some people, it's like they need it to go in this particular way and other people, they need it to go in this way. Uh, as an opportunity for them to number one, get to know me a little bit better, but also so that I can really get to know where they're at, um, especially if they're like really ready to get unstuck in whatever this thing is for them. So it's the it's like one of the first or second comments below, um, but all you have to do is just schedule a time with me and um, and we can go ahead and do that. But yeah, I wanted to do that as a special gift for your people, Kate, because I love That is such freedom. an individualization thing. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> it's fantastic. So individualization is really seeing the uniqueness of everybody and being able to like see the magic in each person. Um, and mm -hmm. so, and I do, I just to reflect that back, like how awesome that is that you not, you know, not just making that available, but that you do every time you see people, I, I see you honing in on their special gifts, um, yeah. which is awesome. Um, I appreciate that about you. Oh, I love that too. What's up, Lindsay? What's up, Stella? I love all the cool people are coming on. That's so good. I need to plug in so I don't die here. Okay. My, uh, my battery. But we can keep rocking and rolling. This is so fun. Okay. 
I feel like I should try on my patch again, but I'm <laughs> not sure if I can adjust it again because I know a lot of people are on here because they wanted to see the eye patch. Oh yeah, they're like, I gotta see. I, know. What... I saw I saw you guys. Come on, I know that you're here for this. <laughs> Stay for the show, though. Stay for the show. Um, I want to. I want to pick your brain again. Can we do that? Yes, please. I love it. So, I could literally stuff all day. I love it. I know. I know. I'm so. I keep thinking about. I have a lot of people that I work with who are still discovering their core motivations. Mm. So when they think, like, for somebody with like it, for myself, I have, I'm, I'm just achiever driven. Like that's because of my DNA. Like I'm, I just love to get things done and off the list, but not everyone is wired that way. My husband's not wired that way. Although I'm trying, I'm really trying. And so, um, but he doesn't appreciate, he's not motivated by the same thing. So I'm I, like, when I meet highly relational people who aren't, you know, they're not driven by the task. There's a different way to connect with them. So we, I have my strengths theories about that, of just appreciating, observing from that, because that's how I spare curiosity. But really, strengths is just the gateway of my work, just like the front door. Um, yeah. So I would love for you to talk about that motivation, because I'm sure I know people that would love this kind of program who don't consider themselves achievers, or they always feel like the task stuff is harder because the relationship stuff is just easier. Can you talk so about that a little bit? Absolutely. Yeah. So the biggest thing that I would say, and I love this, I actually got this from one of my mentors, Elena Brower. She said, connection equals mm -hmm. currency. So, and I'll explain a little bit more. So when you think about like a, a closed circuit in electricity, electricity yeah. can run, can run mm -hmm. through the, the circuit really easily. Like it's a closed circuit and it's the right. same thing when it comes to people that are more relational. And to know that for those of us who are more relational, my entire business, I mean, in la you know, last year, just in my side business alone with my wife, sure. we made well over six figures and that was relationships. Like, right. that's I'm literally in the relationship game. Like for me, it's not about helping people like drive the bottom line. It's, it's about like, it's about connection and it's about the, the relationship that I have with people. And so for those, for those who are not motivated by achievement, for me, it's motivated by the relationship, by like, how can I genuinely help this person? Like the person in front of me. Um, and so I think a lot of people can be motivated that way. So if they're not motivated, cause you know, obviously the obvious one is like a lot of, some people are motivated by money. Some people are motivated, right. like you said, as an achiever, just by like getting th the thing done. And it's like, cool, check that off the list. Awesome. And that feels good. And that feels good for all of us to some degree. But yeah, for those who are really relational, um, I think the real like magic comes in like really getting down with the connection thing and really yeah. build a life and and hope and probably a business around relationships and around like really connecting right. to people so nice yeah it's i love that so connection equals currency yeah connection equals currency that's so that's so great and i love that um it's a great visual too yeah. but there's something in that space of really not questioning like when you're really trying to be of service so like yeah. getting getting all that nervous energy off of us and onto who am I serving? And what, you know, so it, that whole space, because it's when I'm in my head about whatever's happening or if I am task focused and I forget that connection, that also has a result. Um, yeah, yeah, that's really good. And in fact, I mean, that was one, one of my mentors, um, Siobhan Moran taught me that. Um, probably three or four years ago. But yeah, I remember a lot of my business um, and the work that I was doing was so um, about me. And it was about like, yeah. the work, you know, like the impact I'm making on people. And I think a lot of people right now, it's like, it's about the impact and it's about all these things. But it's right. also, that's great. But it's also it stops them because a lot of times they make it about the impact that they're making, right. not about impact right and so I think for me it was it wasn't until I really shifted to like actually making it about them and about like yeah. what they need in that moment and really helping to help them get that in the moment yeah. otherwise 
it was um it was just self-serving and more than that it, it actually didn't end up really helping them like really right. helping them because because lots of times if i made it about me it was about like the need to be loved and liked or something like that sure. rather than sure. actually helping them so sometimes i got to the point and i do still to this day where People don't like me by the time they get off the phone because <laughs> because I'm like really telling them and really sharing with them with a whole lot of love um, where they're at, you know, and actually and a lot of my clients will also become clients because of that, because they've never had somebody really tell them what's up, right. you know, like what's really right. going. On. And um, and I think that if I get my ego or my personality mm -hmm. in the way, I can't really help them. And so right. that's my is it's always about the client for me and it's always about the connection yeah nice. and so that, that's the selfish thing in it is that it, for me it's about the connection but it's ultimately about like how can i really help them right have you heard of sean stevenson love sean stevenson he's a really I love him. interviewed him like a bajillion times he's so cool i love that guy he's so cool i i saw him like three years ago maybe four years ago and um in san francisco and he he was bringing people up it was public speaking segment and so there was a woman who was terrified of speaking in front of the room. There's probably seven or 800 people in there. So he brought her up. Um, and what he had her do is just do a Q&A. So he had let the audience ask questions of her. And, when she, and in that space, because it was reverse energy, she just like dialed down. She gave her gift. She showed up. It was just, and you could physically watch all of that happen, um, which was amazing. And I think so often when we're, we're trapped in here, um, you know, within our own dimension, it's, um, we miss that. We miss that. That's just a powerful, powerful demonstration. He's amazing. Totally. I love that. You're so right. I think so much of this, so much of the work is just, and it's, it's not getting, I think a lot of people, that's what's so funny. I come mm -hmm. from a part of my background also is in yoga. Like I've been, I've been teaching yoga yeah. for over, actually probably close to 10 years now, close to a decade. Wow. A lot of teachers will say like, Get, just get out of your head and get into your body or something like that. And for me, it's like, no, I'm not going to like leave my mind. It's really right. important. I have this thing because it's helped me a lot. So sure. it's how can I just connect the two and have a conversation between the two of them? Yeah. So, I love it. Yeah. Just have them communicate. Not, not that one way is yeah. like just having them talk together instead of like compartmentalizing again and making your old pattern as bad. Like it's not necessarily bad, but the way we relate to that is that maybe there's another conversation that can happen um, between both of those. Yeah, one of my favorite quotes is by Albert Einstein. And he said that a problem cannot be solved at the same level of consciousness from which it was. Yeah. So good. Yeah, and for me, it's like, that's the work is like getting into right. a different consciousness reliably sustainably and consistently to where i can create solutions right. from all of the problems that i'm creating in normal daily life so it's so huge so important that's powerful you you have so many quotes in your head i want i want another one i love quotes i'm a quote machine one well another one would just be tell me some more of your favorites this is well this is probably the one that i try to like live my life by which is um a gentleman named Wallace D. Waddles. It's the silliest ass name. Uh, he wrote- I gotta write that down so I can Google it. <laughs> Wallace Waddles, he, he wrote a bunch of books. One of them was called The Science of Being Great. He also wrote The Science of Getting Rich. Um, he wrote these in like the 1800s. Super wow. fast. Yeah, I mean, super. It's still relevant today. One of his quotes that he said though that I will just never forget is, um, is, is that- yeah, is that we, is that he says the world needs demonstration more than it needs instruction. Amazing. And, and it's just so funny because it's such a simple quote. But for me, that's been so profound in moments where like I, you know, because I am a teacher, like that's, that's like so inherent in me and it probably is somewhere in my strengths. Uh, and I'd love for, you know, if, if either you find yeah, we'll it, play. Or, it's somewhere in there, I'm a teacher. Um, I don't know what the strengths word is for it, but what I always have to like come back to Matt is it, to come back to is like, Matt, you're actually the best teacher when you're just demonstrating this, not just talking mm -hmm. about it and not just okay. teaching movement on it. You know, that's neuroscience based. That does That's great, but it's, it's actually about in demonstrating it. So 
all of my mentors that I've ever worked with. And that's why I think anybody finding a mentor, I don't care if it's me or if it's Kate or if it's uh, Bob, Billy Bob Sue, is that find somebody who really like walks the talk, like who like actually does what they're talking about. Um, you know, for me, it's like, that's, this is, this is my practice. I spend all day. My only job is to be inspired. And actually that came from a really great friend, um, Kate Marolt. Um, she says like, just, she's like, your only job as an entrepreneur is just like to work, to be inspired. And I love like, that. If you're inspired, all you have to do is just show up. And then like, you're going to be amazing with anybody who you talk to or work with, because that's what we want more of is inspiration. Like, and if right. we're inspired, all of our knowledge that we already have is going to come out so effortlessly. And so um, that's, that's, that's my work, you know, is just to be inspired. I love it. I love yeah. it. I'm, I'm curious with in that inspiration when, you know, sometimes life happens. Totally. And what's, I just want to hear a little bit with that, with your practice or what you're noticing, I'm assuming that there's some resilience that has come up. So your way of dealing with those bumps in the road is yeah. probably different now and what you're, what you experience in your clients as they move through. But can you talk a little bit about that? Because, because, you know, we had fires up here and there's people watching who, um, and, you know, and down in Santa Barbara too, but, you know, sometimes big events happen, divorce, um, you know, baby loss, all kinds of, of things can occur. So can you talk about that in terms of the entrepreneurial journey. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. Thanks for bringing that up, Kate. Uh, the nervous system, which is my primary, like that's the primary thing I'm working with with people is its greatest desire is obviously to reproduce. You know, that's like part of our <laughs> right. prime, prime, prime. number one. <laughs> but, but, but more than reproducing is, is being safe. It's like yeah. feeling. And so, um, my works is, is, a is a byproduct of that. Because again, I grew up in a family, like I told you, where it's like, I felt safe, but, but I also didn't always feel safe to be all right. of myself. Right. And so my part in that is, is really working with people. And, and that's what the system is, is, is a safe way right. for you to um, get comfortable in your own skin. And to be able to trust yourself and to be able to come to conclusions um, on what has really, really been like the headlines that have been running through right. your mind, you know, right. over the last 24, 48, 72 hours, you know. And a lot of times, especially, especially when there's fires and there's like divorces and there's like just like crazy life situations right. going on. I think that's actually when my clients find this work to be the most potent is like mm. when is like getting you down type thing is actually when it's most beneficial because it brings you safely back into yourself where you're actually the most resourceful and where you actually have the best answers is when you feel connected to yourself, you know? Right. So that's, that's for me is, is when it's the most important. And I think, I think that that's what we're all looking for. I think we're all looking for right. a lot of safety, you know? Yeah, I agree. The world is a little chaotic at times, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I know for um, for me, there's, you know, that some of the practices that I developed over being in a hospital bed <laughs> for so long, um, you know, in and out of a hospital bed in higher levels of pain than childbirth on the McGill Index. And to... But the, the transformational journey for me started before that, one year before, because you don't know what's going to come down the road. Like you really look. So I, I was so grateful that, you know, I was able to participate in a training and get some coaching before yeah. that began, because I, I didn't feel like I went in blind or I had some it, I, I didn't have life figured out, but I had some resources and, and something to, to rely on. You know, there was support and even some self-trust that I could go through, you know, difficult things and come out the other side and still have a vision, even though it was going to be a journey. It's not, you know, it's not all straight up. It's, you know, it took a while for my body to heal. Yeah. Um, so like, we don't know what's coming down the road. So it's so important to, to master ourselves and create that safety and self-trust so that we are the most resourceful version of ourselves and not sabotaging when life happens. 
Right, right. And it's so, it's so funny. So another one of my mentors, I'm, I'm just like all my mentors apparently are coming out today. Um, Alex Moscow, who taught me so much about, um, yeah, just about um, like really standing for the best in your clients. And one of the things yeah. that he said, if you think you can't, you must. Yeah. He says, if you think you can't, you must. And so to, to your point, Kate, is that lots of people will, I'll have conversations with people and they're like, yeah, but it's not the best time or it's like, but it, I'm not sure if, you know, and, and, and that's actually my point is that it's actually now is the time that you need right. it. If you feel like a little unstable or a little on whatever, or like, oh, I don't know if I have the time. I have a lot on my plate right now. It's like, it's mm -hmm. actually now is exactly when you need this kind of support, especially yeah. because it's going to help make all of those other aspects of your life flow easier and actually feel safer yeah. in the midst of it, right? So in your, if, um, so, you know, I worked with a client who was going through school and she found that school was a heck of a lot easier because of this work, right? Because she was like, right. oh, I actually like know what I want to work on and I make it a priority and then I go, right? And she's, she's found so much more focus and really right. discipline work because of the Supreme Performance Academy. And so um, yeah, it's really fascinating, but you're right. It's like kind of in these times of, of chaos and in these times of like, right. like you said, it's, it's, it's like, it's better now than it is like when you're like in the midst of like, oh my gosh, all hands on deck. I can't do anything. Right. Like when you just flat out, like you said, when you were in that hospital bed, thank goodness you had those tools and resources already right. at proposal before it actually got so bad that yeah that you you know were in a hospital right. yeah yeah for sure um so danielle's asking here let's um let's talk about next steps if people are curious about this work oh, yeah. we want to hear more about the academy can you review um, yeah totally. yeah so danielle the, in the comments i went ahead and posted a form so you can go ahead and fill that out and it's just a simple way for me to get to know you um, and basically set up a call so what I have is called the supreme performance roadmap session and what I'm going to do is take you through your vision like what it is that Danielle or who is filling it out is like super freaking stoked about like whatever it is that you're like I want more of this in my life whatever your vision is and then we just take a look at the challenges, like what's currently in your way, and then creating a plan and a path for you to get there. So, and whether that looks like working with me, or that looks like working with Kate, or that looks like a book or a resource or a contact that I have. Um, but my biggest thing, like I said, is like really helping somebody mm -hmm. figure out, find clarity on what it is that they really want, want more of and helping them get it. So, awesome. Yeah. Any, any, any Anything else you want to share today? Oh, man. Um, Kate, I don't know. I just love you. I just so appreciate you. <laughs> and um, I'm so glad you're on the healing journey right now, figuring out. Yeah. I'm so grateful that you like made the time to do this because <laughs> I know right now like you're healing and um, I'm just so grateful that you did this. So yeah. that's and um, yeah, and I mean, I think I just, I feel like at this point, it's, I don't need to like sell anybody on this. It's like, if this is something yeah. that you to like um, go ahead fill out a form or, or reach out to me here on Facebook and um, we'll set up a time to chat but yeah I just I feel super grateful for this opportunity and uh, it's been a lot of fun well it's, it's fun to have this this dialogue and um, you know and just even for our people to meet it's, it, you know it's cool um, being in you know with there's so many coaches out there this is just what I like there's so many coaches it's like it's inundated and it's so important to find somebody who's who has the integrity and the resonance that so that you're in alignment even in that choice and so I you know I try to tell people even before I'm I can't I don't work with everybody that does my consultation because it's not always a hundred percent yes it's not always the hell yes and there really has to be that resonance and trust um, because like we're gonna be together forever <laughs> So there's something about tribe that, that can emerge from that. Like, I love how you're calling on your mentor's names and like that we stay with each other, you know, because yeah. it's a mutual relationship. There's something really, really great there. What I love about your academy is that you're, you're putting people together who have, who can share in that journey. And we need to tell our stories and we need to share what we've learned 
um, and those ahas, and, and it's, it's that stimulation between all of those and, and creating a safe space for that vulnerability that sometimes we come up against. And when you can normalize that and go together as a group, you experience that tribe stuff. And it's like, it's life changing. And it, it is an anchor, um, not, not just a mirror, but this anchor. And so, um, so I appreciate that about Happy Together. Mm. Mm, thank you so much. I think you're frozen. Wow. Are you frozen? That like really hits me right in the heartstring. Yeah. yeah. Can you hear me? I hear you I now. A bit? Just, but yeah, thank it's you. Not so lined much, up with Katie. your face. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming today. Woohoo! Thank you. I super appreciate I it. And uh, yeah, I just look forward to. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Let's play. <laughs> awesome. Right. Okay. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>